So I had a bit of time on my hands before I had to go to Switzerland to do some more teaching. And I wanted to get one more painting in before I left. And I decided I'll do another gorilla. But I wanted this one to be uh, a bit less commercial, a little bit more interesting, and a little bit more me, really. Uh, I thought, why not give this a go? I'm going to do a gorilla, and it's going to be um, focusing on the, the great strength of the gorilla. And so I decided to do the gorilla in a, in a bodybuilding double bicep pose. And the initial sort of working idea, working title was going to be something like um, Step Aside Arnold Schwarzenegger or um, the, real, the Real Mr. Universe. Uh, I think The Real Mr. Universe was uh, actually the working title half, up to about the halfway stage of the painting. That's where I got the idea to make it a nocturne uh, and to put stars in, symbolic of universe. But the more I painted this picture, the more it began to speak to me in a very different way. And it rekindled a lot of the feelings that I had as a child when I first saw the movie King Kong, the, the original 1933 movie. And oh, that crushed me as a child. I, I was obsessed with it, really. I got the whole thing, the, 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 the strength aspect of the, the giant King Kong, the power. I got all that, but what really got me was the empathy, I suppose. Uh, empathy with King Kong himself. Uh, at an early age, I got that absolutely, and it broke my heart, that story. And the more I began to paint the face of this gorilla, the more I realised I'm painting King Kong here. And the more and more he became King Kong. So much so that at one point I considered even putting biplanes in the sky because I thought it needed something else. And then I thought, no, I won't go that far. And if he is King Kong, I don't want to paint King Kong at the tragic end of his life. I want to paint him in his prime anyway. So I decided against the biplanes. And that gives people the option when they look at this, this painting. He's King Kong to me, but he might not be King Kong to you. So I decided to go with birds instead of biplanes. But for me, he's very much King Kong. And it brought back all these memories, as I say, of uh, when I was a child, I was obsessed with King Kong, so much so that I even wrote a book about King Kong. It was called The Might of Kong with the Giants. 8th of December, 1971. I illustrated this book, wrote this magnificent story, but this is how much the King Kong story meant to me. It was really important. And uh, I think it's great for artists if they can connect with their younger selves, connect with something that inspired them, maybe when they were children, something that formed their character. So my working title for the painting is going to be The Gentle Giant. But between you and me, he's really king.
So I'm just very, very subtly adding a little bit of light and a little bit of cloud to this sky here. If I overdo it, it'll look naff. So I've, just, I've got to be careful. I don't even know if the camera will pick it up because what I'm doing here is very subtle. The colours that are almost almost identical in colour and tone, very very close to each other. But if we do have a suggestion of clouds at that, uh, at that level of tonal and colour resolution, it'll be effective, I think. You never really know till you do it. It's always the risk with painting. And also when it starts to be a success, there's a tendency to go too far which you have to resist. But I just want little inferences. It's one of my favorite things in all of nature is a moonlit sky. The subtle colors of the clouds against the background sky. I absolutely am mesmerized by it every time I see it. Even I'm driving, I have to pull over and have a look. Always wanted to capture that. And this one is a good opportunity to put a bit of that knowledge that I've gained over the years about these colour shifts into play. I don't want to make this sky busy because that would be uh, that would be disastrous. It's actually very tricky. I need the right balance. I'm dry brushing just uh, pure paint straight from the tube nothing more. It's the best. But let me tell you a little bit about the mediums that I have used in this painting. Very few mediums. I don't like to use too much medium, to be honest. A little bit of walnut oil, which I can dispense with a dripper. Two or three drops into the mixture of paint. And occasionally, if I want the paint a little bit more sticky, for this painting, I'm using Gamblin Solvent Free Gel. It's very similar to the Walnut Oil Gel. So I thought I'd give this one a try. I actually like it a lot. And a tiny bit of that medium mixed in with the paint, when I'm doing brush strokes like these, just makes the paint flow off the end of the brush that little bit easier. So, the whole time I'm painting this picture, I'm thinking about the background. And it keeps reoccurring in my mind, the idea of putting a moon here. I always kind of wanted a moon in this picture, but it was like there was nowhere to put it. And then, it dawned on me today that I could have a moon. Strangely enough, I saw this little lid off one of the mediums and I thought, yeah, one of the moon is about that big. And about there. Would that work? Well, let's find out. And so with the moon in place, this painting is now what's known as a nocturne, a painting of the nighttime. Now you might expect that I'm using a lot of black in such a painting. I mean, it is dark after all, but actually there's no black used in the mixing of these colors. So let's talk about how I get the colors darker or how I mix my black. I get my black for this painting by using burnt umber and ultramarine blue. That makes a beautiful black and you can vary it to a warmer black if there's more brown, which we have here, or a cooler black, the more blue we add to it. Another black that I occasionally use is quinacridone magenta plus 
phthalo green. Now these two colours combined make a very, very dark, dark black. So for my night sky, I mixed a colour that had quite a bit of manganese blue in it. it had quite a bit of white in there. Into that mix. And it was basically that sort of tone. Maybe it was in places a little warmer. I did a little bit of brown. A little bit lighter as well. And when it was lighter, I like to add a little bit of the cobalt teal in there. And that just gave it that little extra boost of colour. And what you may notice in this painting is that the gorilla's flesh is basically the same colour mixes. Occasionally I used a little bit of the dioxazine violet just to darken and give a little bit of accent colour to some of my shadows in the gorilla flesh, also in the sky as well. It's all varying degrees of these colours. You might also see little bits of going towards the red shifted in the painting. And this was always done with the alizarin. The alizarins and the browns. And these gave me the warmer accent colours on the flesh. So the cooler went towards the cobalt teal and the warmer tones were with, with the alizarin. And so it's quite a simple limited palette of colours there. The only other colour that was used was a tiny bit of cadmium yellow light in the moon. Now what you see me doing here is just increasing the shadows because now that I've got the moon in it changes the colour, the, the tone dynamic of the whole picture really because it puts, it puts him in a bit more of a silhouette. So I'm just adjusting the tones a little bit here.
Although purposely not overly detailed, the face expression of my gorilla had to perfectly express the core values of this work. Here he stood, symbolic of all gorillas, powerful creatures in the extreme, and yet so vulnerable, gentle and precious. I really wanted to put that across in the work. And so it was vital to get the face expression just right. If you're enjoying this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, so, I'm not particularly convinced that I've got this hand right. I think we need to bring in the other finger. I was thinking at the time that it would be behind this digit, but uh, Anyway, it's, I think this knuckle needs to be higher and another knuckle needs to come out here. So let's see what we can do with that. See if we can, because it looked like one hand was bigger than the other. That's what I thought. So let's just see if I can alter that and make it better. I think this knuckle would actually go up higher. That's the first thing. This knuckle would be just behind it there. This knuckle would be raised up like that. And then
Now the birds I'm painting here are of course symbolic of the aeroplanes in the King Kong story. And as this painting came to its end, a painting that was never intended to be King Kong had become him. And I couldn't escape the feeling that this painting was completing something that I had started many, many years ago.